Well, it's such a good fit for both sides when we learned that James McCann had signed a four-year deal to become a New York Met. The last time we visited with James a month and a half ago, he was an unsigned free agent, and he was sitting in his car. Uh, he's much more comfortable at home today and much more comfortable knowing where he's going to play for the next four years. James, congrats on the deal. It's good to see you again. Thank you very much. Good to see you all. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to you. Uh, you know, there's a lot to talk about here with the Mets, and we'll get to that in a moment. But my first question for you is this. Did Giolito call you at one point and offer you uh, anything personally to stay with the White Sox? He must have been uh, <laughs> devastated that you're you're packing up and leaving. Uh, he, he did not offer me anything himself, but he did check in about once a week. And uh, I'm pretty sure every text message conversation ended with, come home, baby. Um, but uh, <laughs> other, other than that, <laughs> other than that, no. Hey, James, I want to ask you about uh, being a personal, you know, having a personal relationship and being a personal catcher with a pitcher like that. I remember when uh, I played in Seattle and Scott Bradley caught Randy Johnson, it seemed like, all the time, and Mark Langston. Those were like his two guys, and he knew. And I'd see them watching games together, game planning as they went ahead. Take us into the mindset of being that personal catcher with the guy. How, how does that work, and do you have those private meetings and dissecting guys days before the game? Yeah, I think uh, when, when you have that personal relationship with somebody, uh, you just kind of create a, a you, first you have a special bond, but you kind of create a, a routine that, that happens. And Lucas and I definitely had a routine. Uh, he knew that before every the night before every start, I'd send him over my personal scouting report so he knew exactly what was going uh, you know through my head. And he would prepare uh, against what he would think the future lineup or the you know the lineup for the next night uh, and just study those those notes. Uh, so really, we went, when we went into the game the next day, we 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 didn't have to really even meet, uh, you know, the day of the game because he knew exactly where I was coming from, and I knew that we'd be on the same page. You know, I'm thinking, James, about your database in your head and and your familiarity with uh, the various pitchers that you've worked with. And when you left the Tigers and joined the White Sox, there were a few guys on that staff who you had at least faced before. Here you come into a new league, a uh, new part of the country, and I'm curious how you get to know your new pitchers. Uh, does it start with off-season conversations, or is that something that begins when you report to camp early, hopefully in a, about six weeks? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's really already started. Um, I've reached out to, to multiple guys, uh, especially now that we're, we're through the holiday season. I'll, I'll be in touch with them more. Um, that way, when we do show up to spring training, it's like we've already, uh, you know, handled the the nice to meet you, and we're ready to get to work. Um, so that's that's one thing I'm definitely excited about is is building new relationships and getting to know those new guys. Well, I I know you got to be looking forward to catching Jacob Degrom. As you think about the stuff on this team, you know, Syndergaard with his fastball and explosiveness. Who is the best stuff that you've caught? And on the Mets staff, who do you look forward to catching the most? Uh, the best stuff that I've caught, that's a tough one. It's, I mean, shoot, the first three guys I caught when I when I got called up uh, with Detroit were three Cy Young Award winners in, in Price, Verlander, and Scherzer. Um, so it's really hard for me to, to choose one particular guy. Um, as far as having a closeness of a relationship, Lucas Giolito's been, been the guy that, uh, that I've had the best relationship with. Uh, but for as far as the, the Met staff, I'm, I'm excited about a lot of guys. Obviously, Degrom. Um, I'm excited just to see you know his thought process and things, the way that he goes through uh, you know his day and, and goes about his business. Uh, but a guy like Stroman excites me. Um, you know, you, you see the way that that he changes his delivery, the way that he uh, he alters his pitches. I'm, I'm excited to, to kind of pick his brain and, and learn uh, learn from him a little bit. Um, and then obviously, you know, you've got the, the, the younger guys on the staff and, and uh, getting to know them a little bit. But uh, Stroman, Stroman intrigues me with, with the way, that, you know, just his athleticism and uh, his knowledge for the game. Yeah, you know, we always talk about the hitters caught off guard when a guy quick pitches or shimmy shimmy hangs and delivers. What about the catcher? Does that give you pause yeah. at all? Um, it, it's, it's tough. Uh, I mean, I, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, the, the, the quick pitching, if you want to change your, 
you know, your, your leg lift or, or shimmy shimmy, I, I think that's fine. But, uh, you know, quick pitch, I, I'm not a huge fan of, but it's part of the game. And um, as a catcher, you just know the guys that, that, that could potentially do that. And um, I, I've yet to catch a guy that I give a sign to, to quick pitch to. Um, it's more just, you know, their feel. Uh, so that's something I'm interested to know about with, with Stroman too. Is he just do his thing and, and I'm ready for anything? Or is it something that, that we kind of get on the same page and know when he's going to quick pitch or know when he's going to, uh, you know, change his, his timing? Hey, baseball aside, James, let's talk a little bit about New York. New York City and in a non-COVID environment because no city is the same now as it was a year ago. What were your impressions of traveling to New York as a visiting player? Did you have uh, a favorite lunch spot, a favorite post-game dinner place? Talk about New York City. Well, I love going to the city. Um, you know, I've, I've actually, the only time I've ever played uh, in that city field was in the Futures game in 2013. Um, I have not played there as a big leaguer yet. So the only time I've been to New York is, is to go to Yankee Stadium. Um, and I'll be honest, the as far as eating out, the the clubhouse that the Yankees are visiting clubhouse, their their chef is so good. Uh, very few guys go out after a game to to eat. Um, so really, I the, my biggest memory of going to New York is we had an off day. Uh, I want to say it was back in 2016, and uh, I was able to do all the the tourism type things, and that that was pretty neat because that's something I had never had to, had an opportunity to do. You're not gonna get to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, James, we appreciate the visit, man. Uh, congrats again on, on the deal with the Mets. It's such, such a good fit on both sides. And uh, onward and upward, man. We'll check in with you during the season. Enjoy the rest of your offseason, and we'll talk to you at spring training. All right, sounds good. Y'all take care. <laughs>